and CAI and a PhD from Florida State University. Dr. Desai is currently as uh, a faculty in finance and accounting area at the Indian Institute of Management and the Bush. He has a teaching experience of over a decade and has taught at Oklahoma State University, Florida State University, University of Central Florida and of course his current experience is with IMK. His key research interests have been in the areas of auditing, corporate governance and fraud risk management. His forte is into examining the behavior of factors various governance and fraud risk factors on the perception of auditors and company management. He has not only published several international research journals, but also has acted as a re reviewer for such journals. Welcome, sir. And I would request the student audience, sir, to render him a token of appreciation. I am sure our audience would learn and earn knowledge from the insights of the esteemed judges. With this, I announce the beginning of the case analysis composition. May the best win, or the best. Before we start, I would request that the doors be closed and nobody is let in or out while the presentation is on. And the audience would be quiet and not using cell phones. Thank you. A quick revision of the rules of the event. Each qualifying team would require having a team of 5 to 6 members for the competition or the case analysis event. All the team members will be required to take part in the competition either in making the presentation or in the defense round. Three members will have to make a presentation and the remaining <laughs> have to defend the Q&A round. The members presenting the case would not be allowed to defend in the Q&A round. The other members would have to define the analysis. All the colleges having given their case study previously, the participants will have to make a PowerPoint presentation on their analysis. Each team will be given a maximum of 10 minutes of presentation and will be followed by 5 minutes of Q&A session. At the completion of 8 minutes, there will be an alarm. And at the end of 10 minutes, there will be another alarm indicating that the team should stop their presentation. Marks will be deducted if the team exceeds the time, but it would depend on the present distribution. The presentations have already been submitted and therefore no changes will be allowed. The, particip the participants will have to restrict only to the facts and figures given in the case case study and are not allowed to use any resources or additional information in analyzing the case. Participants are not allowed to reveal or disclose their college name and would be known by their college codes only. Any college revealing their college identity would be disqualified. We now invite the first, first college, that is C9, to start with their presentation. Meanwhile, C23 should be ready to present next. All the best to all the participating colleges. I just uh, want team 4, 22, 19, and 27. Is anyone here? Is anyone here? Can this please know the, the college presenting in C9? Organizations have been changing their organizational structure, their strategies, 
and somewhere down the line, a lot of compromise their models, their values, and also their work culture. But there is one such organization established in 1926 and since the last 87 years, Labrador hasn't compromised on these three terms, values, their models, and their work culture. So today, we will explain our case, the 7S model. The 7S critical framework model point like the company, the Indian company itself. We will be judging them and evaluating them on their own values. First, what is this model of a model of company? It is the 7S framework model, naturally a business model, which helps to organize a company in an effective and authentic way. All the factors in this model, the 7 cases, are all interdependent. Managers are to take into concern all the 7 factors in determining the operations of the company. If even one is let down, it, it affects the entire chain. Let's start the first test, chair value. This exhibits the core value and the beliefs of the corporation. Now what is so good about meeting the and company that there are so many core values instead in its employees such that all these values are also applicable on their piece, they appear on their piece. Also, they don't only boast about it, they also practice what they are preaching. Next, that is strategy in terms of allocating resources, sustain competition, sustain environmental and the respect of the environment and also get to the ultimate goal. What is this value building? Now there are so many eminent companies out there in the world charge that client on the basis of time. But where we can be different, we can be company different, is that they charge their clients on the basis of the value that they create. Next is self function too. This is a plan and more and an effective factor in this strategy. What happens here is we can see gross for some reason of this now consolidates, takes a rebirth and then it grows again. Now between these two phases the two phases of growing, what it does that it tries to check all the errors and tries to adapt to the environment and change. In the top management, you can see company provide financial advice to the top management and store their position in this. Ultimately, so, successful management. It is a 42 page book. It has a 42 page book which hears the ideas and makes it a not a replacement replace to management but makes it a supplement to it. And each and every word in this book. Has been seen everywhere in this book. Huh? As if you can do it after the consent of all the partners of the, of the of the company, and all of them are there on one thing, simple basic level, with one understanding, one clear thought process, and in, in total harmony to which they are trying to do. I don't know. Don't go through the situation. Thank you. 
Slide mentioned something about uh, values and having stuck to values since 1926 and having stuck to the honesty and integrity. So, can you give me some examples as to what these values were or what was being referred to at the start of the presentation? Yeah. 
The next college would be C3. Is C3 college here? The next college C. The next college C25. Please be. Thank you. 
That is ready. Well, 
and uh, judges, please take note that uh, we have discussed this issue with the faculties and they have allowed it. Markets with different corporate cultures and huge geographical coverage. 
how do you think you can restructure and simplify it at this end? Restructuring would be, I would say, point by simplification, I would say, we should follow. Uh, because uh, as we consider the hiring or the hierarchy or the kind of operation for functioning has been done, I can see from the base level to the top level, it's like as an associate, associate to analyst, analyst to senior manager, then to person to further principles to be the directors and consultants. So that, that cultural uh, hierarchy might not work in different countries, in different offices. And, no. and uh, you know, you keep using the word opportunistic. To me, opportunistic and simplification are kind of opposites when it comes to you know expanding your business. Yes, sir, expanding your but I think at the top level the transparency lies because uh, we consider the hiring part. When it comes the later part after being becoming a principal. As a position of a principal, the decisions are taken by the top management, the uh, lower level management, or even the office manager or associates are not considered. We need a top manager. Although so basically you're talking about simplification of your administrative structure, not yes. the business model that is. Yeah, no, no, not the business model. That that would be. Oh, okay. Still, we can add on one thing, which is that uh, you are right. The opportunity. Uh, being opportunistic and uh, simplifying are two opposite things. But being planned opportunistic and simplifying are an opposite things. They help each other. Thank you. There is, please note that the performing team was C3. The next performing team would be C2. <coughs> next team C25, please be ready. The, next, the performing team right now is C2. Uh, regarding this point, the introduction of promotion, which 
actually on a later stage proved to be very very important. What happened was that this brochure, the, the, the making of the brochure was the entire management team was not a consensus. But then finally when the brochure was made, it included all the things that the, all the services that the firm provided, right from the basis, from the top level management to the factory floor management. All the, all the things that the firm provided, they were included in the brochure, which were, everybody was in consensus. So the partners then got to know what all the firm is doing, as well as the people around. And which was, which took the form in a strategic direction, and plus it was also an advertisement strategy, which helped the client to get to know more about the firm. Then we have uh, the, uh, the economic stability point, which was something which was very important, as the firm started charging higher fees. As they believe that higher price gave the warranty to the client that the service which was being provided was perfect since they were starting really higher prices, which also further helped the firm to be economically quite stable. To further discuss on the strategies, I would like to call Rohan. A very pleasant evening to one of our presents here. Uh, I might, uh, I am going to take on uh, from the next slide, uh, focus on the top level management. What the company, what the corporation did was that their focus and their target party was well defined. The target market was top level management of the top company. Why did they do so? They wanted to create a good brand for themselves because they only focused on top companies in the league. Focusing on the top level management, what made them do so? Focusing on the top level management went on with the philosophy that if they focus on to the top level management, they are going to invest their time and their resources into solving problems which are few in number, but their impact and magnitude is huge. I would like to bring you in terms of the fact that as we go down the management levels, the number of problems, they keep on increasing, but the importance is lesser. So what the corporation did was they started solving and focusing on the top level management with the belief that these measures which they have taken for the top level management will be perforated down to the basics of the bottom level management. Unrelenting focus on the top level is what I just discussed. Higher fees. Higher fees is something that they could afford only when they were focusing on the top level management. Top level management of the top companies and my friends, I would want you to know that they work with a psychology and an experience that for that higher fees, they were warranting value additions. Moving on to the next slide, is that of value building. Value building, what they, they call with a very new concept of value building in consultancy. Value building was a concept which was uh, focused on and targeted by law firms. For the first time, we can see got the idea of value building. They used to charge their clients, not on the protocol of the number of hours that they had devoted for the project, not for the number of employment which were generated or engaged in bringing the results to the project, but the value which we can see created for their clients. So they used to measure the value which was created and then used to charge uh, the clients accordingly. These people ignored the time sheets. They did not take, take into consideration the time which was allotted, but they wanted to give their top clients, top management deliverables, and they charged clients for deliverables. This is the idea of value-based spinning. Geographic, uh, geographic growth strategy. Plans with opportunistic approach versus cold-blooded approach. Let me brief you regarding these two approaches. Plan by opportunistic approach means that you first of all plan, evaluate the opportunities and then set up your operations in that way. Whereas a cold blooded approach, as the name suggests, you set up your operations there, not keeping in regard the opportunities, the clients, the future income that can be generated out of these places and just go start working there. What McKinsey did was they had a plan with opportunistic approach in which they used to see if they have a client base present in that area or not. Once they evaluated the client base, then they shifted to its senior management can be shifted that if there are good universities from which they can get new fresh recruits, which they can be trained under McKinsey. And accordingly, they used to set up their operations. And that is why this is one of the approaches which has led McKinsey and paid it off in legal amounts. Moving forward, the step function growth. Why do I call it the step function growth? The, this is an idea from which all of us should learn. Step function growth was adopted by McKinsey in 
which what they did was that the first of all they used to expand. Now when the expansion took place, they used to take a step back, used to observe as to how is that expansion working. Once things were settled in McKinsey, once the expansion had started reaping the fruits which they had thought of, it was only then that they moved on to further expansion. So this made a step function. First of all, expansion, then they maintain consistency, then expansion again, and then they maintain consistency again. So this made a step function growth, which prepared them for the next period. Now I would like to invite my friend Kushagra to please you with the future at the further uh, presentation. Thank you. Good afternoon. As we know that McKinsey right now has 17,000 firm members, including a 5,000 consultants. So how did they manage the process of recruitment? So basically, McKinsey's process was to select the experienced people, but that's where the marketing board, the successor, had a different approach of choosing the people from uh, different B schools and then training them because we felt that you know changing the new people, young people, was much more easier than changing the experienced people. Then it subsequently led to the major, uh, the, yeah, huge evaluation process, because of which then they were, you know, if at all they proved, they proved to be sustained with the uh, growth of the firm, they were given the promotion thing. And if they did not, if they did not at all, you know, go along with the form of the firm, then they were uh, uh, informally helped to gain the alternative employment. And make, uh, making some company right now has, you know, the alumni uh, association, which it has contacted all the employees which have left the firm who are not along the subject of the firm. The next is f -time index. This is a full stop index which actually, you know, uh, basically helps into the uh, not wasted of the talents of the people. They do not want any people to just enter the firm and just work like this. So they had a huge conversion process. They had uh, induction through evaluation, the formal entrance in the office by evaluation. They had a uh, conversion process in evaluating the incentives and extension of employment. And the level of hierarchy. And if they are uh, through the process of uh, the work, they are sustained uh, with the, uh, you know, the, uh, through the with the quality of the work in the firm, they were given promotion. They were made from associates to engagement managers and to associate principals, principals, directors, and then global We have this three dimensional metric. As metrics and company was growing, there was only problem the problem of bureaucracy. And the problem of bureaucracy can be only solved by, the, by creating an SPU structure, this strategic business unit business structure. And one of the main possibilities to, uh, to control the bureaucracy was to stop our, the solution of decentralization. It means that the three regional co uh, coordinators, USA, U uh, Europe, and Asia, were still more divided virtually into three more groups. And then they were meant to allow function independently. The review was done by the head office. This was the way how we can solve the problem of bureaucracy. The second uh, way was to create an internal task force where the people were made to work internally together and then they, were, they had to give the review to the head office. The problem of salary It's the incentive which uh, you know, the directors get from the form but they, from the shape they don't actually possess. They get it through the way, uh, through the way the form gives the director for the territory to hold. It is ultimately decided by the director, the working player, of course for uh, the shape they are uh, decided by the director. It creates a problem of the insider training. The role of If the problem shadow could be solved and the split aspect of shares is given to the director, then I probably see that the probably see that the firm can go ahead further in the competitive uh, atmosphere right now, making the negative the other two things three, it includes Boston Consultative Group and Paid Income. question is about this step function. This is the third group that has mentioned the step function. What is the big deal about it? Any company that expands has to consolidate after an expansion. Right? So why is McKinsey was special in this case? Simply because the case said. No, if you compare with Because it's a uh, two more time dimensional case, so I just wanted to compare it. So, second thing was the one that is uh, all the expansion policy, then this is what you designed to see well, what is the base of this expansion. Could any company ever do that? No, sir. Why? 
Because I set up a new factory, I wait to see how the production works, how my demand is being, you know, satisfied, and then I'm going to fix. I'm forced into a step function now whenever I expand. What is so special about that? Because one thing I need to highlight here is that McKinsey did not call it a product for expansion. It wanted to grow slowly and steadily. And that this is what McKinsey always did. But do you think the market forced it on them rather than this being a strategy that they employed? No, no. Because we have seen that McKinsey always focused on the top management. Therefore, it could have wanted to expand. It could have focused on the lower management. It could have focused on the middle management. But why did it focus only on top management because I think it had its policy be here. So here also we see that it had a particular expansion strategy and it didn't want to expand or rapidly. It wanted to stabilize first and then expand. So, now I think that Did, 
ethos is somewhere not correct because the auditing field is highly you know, regulated and so you know having a CAO of PwC or ENY in India and doing things here is one thing versus this or that. Somewhere that, like that point, even denying these things is this and all of this stuff. It's not necessarily that, uh, you know, by only bringing external rules, something like uh, The only point we wanted to highlight is that at each level we wanted uh, that the people, the, the health should have a sense of responsibility. Right now, all the decisions are being taken by the top level, that is the team of the director. But we want that this should be decentralized uh, because unless they decentralize it, as they uh, grow, they won't be able to uh, perform it. What's the coordination aspect? This three different arms will be working on their own. Yeah. So that company philosophy and everything that we talked about will be slowly compromised over a period of time. As you said, there should be a proper communication between the units. There are still so many big forms that have been digitalized and have been digitalized so far. So it's why not to such a thing. point you are making, trying to make, here is. Okay, that's, that's a valid point that if we want to do looking at it. But uh, when, you, when you actually work in the industry, the more you are closer to your people, the more the leaders be a principal or an associate or anybody for that. The more you pay players, the more you are away from your group. And you don't get the real feedback. Because if somebody is sitting at the global headquarters, and uh, Asia head is giving some kind of feedback, but there is some problem in Singapore or say uh, India office. He's really not bothered until and this whatever I think are levels of say exciting terms are even on like in the middle of the he he won't be bothered about it. So it would be more of you know, the more you communicate with your team, the more closer you are with your team. That is one side of it. Other side is obviously People are elected to change and change is always there for good bad. So time will be good bad. I I take your point of view. Excellent performance team C2. Uh, there's a little change in the flow. Uh, the team that we're performing right now is uh, C25. The next team C4 is C8. The next team, C4, please be ready. Uh, they were uh, to the 
acquire the knowledge through various sources about how to proceed the company without James Mann, without the uh, merger that they have been with the company and then using their clients. Then uh, for the attitude, they will have the attitude of perpetual existence even if the James Mann's term Mackenzie, who is the CEO of a small world, even the murder that they had written three years ago was not with them, but still they had the attitude of going perpetually. Now, if we talk about the skills, he uh, what Bower, the CEO of McKinsey in 1937 did, was that he, uh, he uh, approached to Derek Rogan, who was one of the members of the merger company that was Willington, and he diverted him to and asked him to come into his company which, uh, with his skills, and then he invented around about dollars, 2.50 million. And thus, they had the habit of excellency throughout uh, their existence. Now, again, there's the second instance. If we talk during the Second World War, they were not actually clear about their goals. They were initially serving the shop floor level, but they were not totally gold focused. So again, how did they follow this model work? Depending on the knowledge, they actually acquired the knowledge through various sources about their goals. They developed the attitude of taking money only for value and delivering it, and only to serve the top level management. Now how they developed the skills well, they went for economic ability. They started charging higher money for getting the premium segment. They started getting good recruiters and good consultants all over them for them so. And now uh, how they, uh, this was all about this game. And then they developed the habit of excellence. They came up with a statement in their social that we do not replace top management, but we supplement them. And this is how in various instances this cash model was developed by the company. So further presentations would be carried out by one of my companions. Thank you. Thank you. 
other reactor. And then the GMTB is appointed in your body later and it will be followed by three metric structures that is from the energy and geography. Uh, one thing that we uh, like to see, we will see you think about the company is that GMT has been appointed as uh, captain associated with the uh, like recruiting all the regional coordinators and all the functional heads. And uh, we think uh, uh, it should be, uh, it should uh, be changed. Like uh, the GMT position should be used for some important, uh, important other uh, functions rather than the uh, recruitment of the recruit, uh, regional coordinators and other. Uh, so one of the suggestions was being becoming venture capitalists. Right? So what does a venture capitalist exactly do? Venture capitalist venture, exactly universal uh, venture company takes a stake into the company and drives and supports and motivates and guides them to become larger even from the way they are. They are the right hand with money, with resources that they have. Actually, Megan's current model consistent with being a venture capitalist? No, sir. Actually, they are not into uh, finance sector. But they do have, what they do have is consulting power. They know how it can be expanded. Right, but to buy that stake in the company as a venture capitalist, how do you raise that money? Like various international offices and that is what we are telling that uh, maybe they don't buy staying in MNCs. They are not looking for that. What they are looking for is, like for an example, that uh, we in India have called Banta. We all believe that it, it, if it is dying in a way, it can compete with the government life. But stay it does not. Because maybe because of lack of consultancy, maybe because of lack of expertise they have in these strategies. So then why is the recommendation to become a venture capitalist? They are already a good consultant. But what happens actually, if they invest over in a small asset, which is promising enough, that was our quote, that if the asset is promising enough, right, then what would happen in the long run is you would have a stake in a larger company with larger profits that they are earning right now. But that is not the business model. That is not the business model, but again, revenue and the consulting power itself is you. They don't work because of the spreads are that they speak to their core values, and their core values is focusing on consulting. And they would be top management itself. Because you know, there are a lot of other issues associated with venture capital. Right? You are you are you uh, an idea or an opportunity and then there is risk involved in three rounds of things. So basically they start another arm or of the business. They do need to uh, uh, develop a new uh, new department from that thing. Second thing was we talked about those governance issues, right? So why do you think McKinsey is better placed than any of the big posts to handle them? Because so they are all providing auditing and government services. So why do McKinsey even compete with them in that area? So we don't uh, want it to compete actually. Because competing is not the answer that would McKinsey would have for the auditing. But it would have some competition with them. No, it would both, but again, that can be another strategy being implemented. They do have another which side of resources and assets with them, which can be utilized for public welfare also. And this will again uh, give them a different behavior for advancement. There might be a reason they are not in there. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And the market is already saturated with the most in there.
simplest way, the model will be normally to find an empty kind of a product. The venture capitalists are the people who look for 30, 40 percent returns here on the ticket in the company, and all that company, and get out of that. So, actually, when venture capitalists, it's a different segment of industry, like we said. But, yes, that could be one area of diversity.
Right now, they are focusing on top level management. Right? So, of course, it's not going to be any top level management in the UFC. Right? So, what, what would be their role? What would be the typical service that they would provide to a typical company in a UFC? Or a typical client in a UFC?